Hi everyone, welcome to Forbes Flash. Hope you all had a good Thanksgiving. We're jumping back into things this week. Stick around for our biggest stories and a detailed look into what's happening to the Today Show post Matt Lauer. Cyber Monday is probably one of Jeff Bezos' favorite days all year. A surge in Amazon stock price boosted his fortune to a stunning $100 billion earlier this week. He was, at the time, the only billionaire in the world with a 12-digit fortune. Wonder if it's lonely all the way up there. Only Bill Gates really understands, as his fortune hit that mark back in 1999. As of Wednesday, however, stock prices fell enough that Bezos' fortune dropped down to a measly $98 billion. Keep an eye on this to continue fluctuating in weeks to come. Let's start out with some straight talk for anyone house hunting in California. The state is home to more than half of America's priciest zip codes. Atherton, California takes the cake, with a median home price of $9.69 million. The area is the epicenter of Silicon Valley money, so its spot at the top of the list isn't surprising. On the other coast, only New York neighborhoods Upper East Side and Tribeca made the top 10 most expensive zip codes. Median prices are down in Manhattan this year, but that doesn't mean they're affordable. Case in point, this $65 million townhouse. Victoria's Secret brought their annual fashion show to Asia for the first time this year, but not without some snafus, such as visa troubles for some models and performers. Walking in the show this year were a few of the world's highest paid models and one of our latest cover stars, Carly Kloss. The 25-year-old made $9 million over the past year and spoke about landing on the cover of the Under 30 issue backstage. It's such an honor, she said. I can't believe that I feel I have so much more to do. Fellow Forbes cover star Kendrick Lamar made headlines this week as he was nominated for seven Grammys. Fellow hip-hop cash king Jay-Z led the nominations with eight nods, including Song of the Year and Album of the Year. The star now has a career total of 74 Grammy noms. Pretty impressive, right? Next up, North Carolina has been in the top five of our best states for business list for the past 12 years, but it's finally landed the number one spot this year. Thanks to low business costs, incentives, and a young, educated workforce, the state has long had one of the country's strongest business climates. So, what made it number one this year? An improved employment outlook and second lowest business costs. Second place on the list is Texas, due in part to strong startup activity. <music> Forbes announced its annual Indonesia Rich List this week, and it wasn't a surprise who landed at the top. The Hartono brothers, who have ranked number one for nine years in a row, are still up there. Their net worth nearly doubled to over $32 billion over the past year, largely due to an almost 50% rise in the value of their stake in listed Bank Central Asia. Bitcoin passed $10,000 on Tuesday this week, reaching a new milestone for the digital currency and setting the stage for a boost in investor interest. The cryptocurrency is up 950% year to date, but it's anyone's guess as to where it goes next. Want to follow along? Follow at Forbes Crypto on Twitter. It'll keep you up to date with everything you need to know. Joining us now is Forbes media and entertainment reporter Maddie Berg to discuss the fallout from Matt Lauer's sudden firing from the Today Show this week. It's been a whirlwind just week for the Today Show. On Monday night, a Today Show employee uh, approached NBC executives with allegations against Matt Lauer. Around 24 hours later, he was fired. And on Wednesday morning on the Today Show, um, Savannah Guthrie announced that her co-host had been fired. Since then, um, more allegations have come to NBC executives. Since Matt Lauer was fired, two more women we know of have approached NBC executives with allegations of sexual assault and harassment, um, one of each. Both the New York Times and Variety have been reporting on this story for weeks, um, in Variety's case, months. So, so there's a lot more developing, and we will be following it. So the past two weeks have been kind of huge for the morning shows, um, and the morning shows are always a very competitive TV landscape. Uh, last week, Charlie Rose was fired um, from CBS This Morning, and then this week with Matt Lauer. With Matt, it's particularly a big deal for the Today Show. He's been on for over 20 years. Um, he is the highest paid, uh, just for his salary, he has the highest paid morning show salary of any other host. So the Today Show brings in 450 to $500 million in revenue each year, and they're paying Matt Lauer twenty million um, in his salary, so so that's a lot of money they're 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 spending and betting and on this star lead anchor. And I think that right now we're kind of seeing between him and Charlie Rose, maybe we shouldn't be be betting so much on this 
personality, especially in the morning. I think it's also it says something about the Today Show that they fired him so quickly. And I think media in general, um, between Charlie Rose, Mark Halpern, Matt Lauer now, has been very quick to respond. And that's because the news business relies on trust and integrity. When that trust is breached, he really, his job is ruined. So as of now, Hoda Kotb, who generally hosts the fourth hour of the Today Show, um, has been filling in for Matt. That started on Wednesday morning uh, when it was announced that he had been fired. We don't know, and NBC has not commented on, who will replace Matt. Um, there are a lot of rumors floating around. I think whoever it is will not be paid anywhere near Matt's salary. I think NBC has kind of learned a lesson in shelling out such big bucks, at least for right now. There's a rumor that Megyn Kelly, who was already on NBC's payroll, um, will kind of shift from the third hour to the first, and maybe it will kind of go back to the old Today Show format, where the three hours are, are, the, are the lead anchors, and then the fourth hour is Hoda Kotb and Kathy Lee. There's a lot of ifs in the Megyn Kelly, Kelly rumor. Um, she has had trouble booking celebrity guests. There's been kind of a strong reaction from Today Show viewers. She, she isn't as bubbly and lovable and relatable as, as the Today Show, I think, wanted her to be and NBC wanted her to be. She also struggled with her Sunday night news program when it launched over the summer. Another suggestion is that Brian Williams might move back. Um, he was obviously the NBC nightly news host and then um, after some fabrications and embellishments, he was demoted to MSNBC. And that's another big if. We don't know if he's completely rehabilitated and ready to be trusted again by the public. I think that, you know, one one thing that we're we're learning is that that whoever it is, I think that right now in, in today's climate, um, it should either be a woman or it should be a, a man who is who is not the center of attention. I think that that if you watched the Today Show, Matt Matt was the lead. It wasn't Matt and Savannah. Savannah is amazing and, and I think now it should be either Savannah and maybe a younger, less experienced, less well-known male anchor, or, or two women. Another kind of whole economy that this affects is the morning show economy. Um, morning shows are extremely profitable to their networks. They're very popular with this key demographic of, you know, 18 to 49, 25 to 54. Um, they're popular with women, um, who advertisers love to target. So they bring in a lot of money, and, and they're very competitive with each other. Um, in 2013, Good Morning America kind of broke a decade plus long Today Show streak. And um, now, since then, has brought in more viewers, but to the Today Show has younger viewers. Um, so, so they're still kind of neck and neck in this big rivalry between them. And, and CBS this morning, uh, it's, it's not as high in viewership, but it also brings in a lot of money for the network. We're kind of gonna have to wait and see. Our Today Show viewers are gonna start watching GMA. Um, the Today Show responded really quickly to these allegations. So, so I, I don't know if it's fair to punish the Today Show. Matt's not on it anymore, but, but you know, maybe they love Matt regardless and, and they're gonna miss him and want to start watching GMA. We don't know and I think that's that's something to really keep our eye out on the next few weeks is how, how this affects ratings because those ratings translate to ad dollars. I think Matt Lauer was particularly shocking and a huge deal because he is such a huge deal to NBC and to the millions of viewers who watch him every single morning and have done that for over 20 years. Thanks for joining us. Tweet your feedback using hashtag Forbes Flash, and we'll see you next week. Tune in every Friday morning, same time, same place.